So, I was printing today on uh, one of my two FL Send printers. Um, the one that I've modified to have a laser. Um, this is the driver, and then the laser is uh, right there. Uh, laser um, mode, where the laser replaces the hot end. And it's not hot swap, right? Well, it's obviously not hot. I, um, it's not easy to swap. Um, I have to take out this whole um, part cooling fan and a hot end fan assembly, as well as the hot end itself, and that's four screws that are all a little bit hard to reach. Um, but anyways, so I just converted it back from the laser thing um, by doing those four screws, and I was happily printing on it. Um, when... The uh, y-axis belt, I think it got jammed in the tensioner somehow, because I'm kind of troubleshooting now. Yeah, it's very jammed in the tensioner. I can't pull it through the tensioner. So it somehow got jammed in the tensioner um, while printing. Um, and the y-axis stopped moving and made these awful sounds. And then it pulled one of the zip ties out and jumped across the printer, and then it stopped moving. Um... This tensioner. Brute force. Always a good idea when working around delicate electronics. Um, I mean, these aren't really delicate electronics. That's a tensioner button. The belt could get worn, but I'm not too concerned about that. Sorry, my uh, 3D printed tripod thing. I printed it with 10% infill because I wasn't really thinking. Um, and I was like, oh, 10% infill will be fine. Um, and it wasn't. It wasn't a very good idea to print it with 10% infill because it snapped. And I was reprinting it with 15% infill right now. Um, and this printer, well, broke and I decided to record the troubleshooting process. So you're not going to get this with a tripod because, well, the printer it was printing on broke. So basically what happened was the tensioner the screw in it? You can't really see this, but the way the tensioners on these FL Sun printers are designed is the screw here can stick out there, and the screw was sticking out just a little bit, and the belt ended up catching on it. Um, so I had to put the screw back in, which wasn't too bad. Um, and the belt... <sighs> Sorry, you really can't see any of this. Um... But, so now I'm going to just tie the belt again, and the tensioner is in its loosest tension setting, which is what I want, so I can tighten it up later, because I'm not going to get it perfectly tight when I go to do this. Um, so let me grab an appropriately sized zip tie. Um, and tie it up, and then we can put this printer back where it belongs, and hopefully uh, finish, well not finish up, restart that print. Um... At least PLA is somewhat cheap. It's not super cheap, but it's not too bad. I maybe I know I can buy those phone tripod camera mount things for a couple of dollars. I just record this with my phone. I mean, no one watches. Well, people watch these, but not enough people to get even a penny off of it. So I'm not going to spend money on it. And I already have a phone with a half decent camera. Besides, with the YouTube compression, I don't think anyone's going to notice the difference between a phone and a 4K DSLR or whatever. I mean, I could record in 4K if I want, I just don't have the storage. Um, even I, I mean, I have a 64 gig micro SD card in my phone, but even with 1080p, that's been filling up fast. So I'm just putting on some zip ties now. You can see them there. Uh, these are obviously not the original zip ties because the original ones were white, but these will do. Um, it's a little bit loose, but I can always just tension that up with the tensioner um, because that's what it's there for. And I just have to cut these zip ties and put it back in the stand, and it should be good to go. So I'm going to uh, stop the camera and then put it back, and we can test it. So uh, here's the printer back in place. And now I'm just going to hook up all the wires to my ATX power supply. Um, which comes here, um, and is mounted beneath the printer on the table, um, and there's the other printer, which I could 
use, but it was in use when the, um, this whole thing started. So these are really crappy Molex adapters, and you can see when I try to plug them in, some of the pins come out. Um, which is fine, because the power supply is not on right now, but just be aware. So you don't end up shorting anything out and causing a fire. Um... Or so when the pins come all the way out, like they just did now, so you don't plug them back into the wrong uh, holes. Should probably invest in some better Molex adapters. But there's this, so that powers the uh, parts cooling fan, which I control the speed there because I didn't know how to plug it into this board because it doesn't seem to have any controlled fan ports on it. They just seem to be all on all the time. So I just decided to plug it in via Molex. Um... And it also has the lights, which are mounted there. So it's just a cheap LED strip I bought off uh, AliExpress, as I buy all of this stuff from. So, we're going to plug in the 8-pin CPU, which is my main source of power for this thing. Um, these adapters are also, f the adapter I'm using to plug it into the printer is also from AliExpress. Um, and it's... Not completely awful, but it's not a super high quality adapter. And so I stopped the camera so you wouldn't get bored of me connecting all the wires again. Um, but they're all connected, and then I'm just going to shove them up there at some point so they're not hanging down. Oh, wait, I forgot to reconnect the power switch. I'm like, wait, why did that not work? So the power switch. Um, it has two overly beefy um, copper clad aluminum speaker wires connected to it because I had some speaker wire lying around and I needed some wire to wire it with. And then it has this little, little, um, very um, wimpy connector connected to that big beefy copper clad aluminum speaker wire, um, which is amusing and, you know, defeats the purpose of using high power wires. But this is just going to the ATX uh, enable pins on the 24 pin connector, the uh, start pins or whatever you want to call them. Um, and the way the cable lengths are done, you have to pass it through here. And then the uh, appropriate connector is on the other end, and these are just those JST connectors that I love. The uh, 1.25 millimeter little uh, cheap JST connectors. There we go. So the printer just started up. The uh, tension is on the loose side, so we are going to tension this up. There we go, that's relatively taut now. Uh, we have a limit switch wire going through here, which means we're going to have to fix that. Um, so I'm just going to... Ooh, the fans nipped me. I'm going to disable the fans. Let's plug in the uh, this Molex connector. Well, I'll just shut off the whole printer. How about that? So we're going to unplug you and then fix you up. Because we don't want you going that way. Was that the wrong wire? I think I unplugged the wrong wire, and now I'm never gonna... There it is. And yes, that totally was the wrong wire. Okay. You can go back in. If I can reach. You see, the problem with the amount of wires that there are here is that doing anything with them is, like, impossible. So this is the Z end stop. There we go. So, you can't see anything, but I'm untangling it now, and again, tripod was on the printer when it broke, so at least I'm trying, <laughs> um, but I'm failing quite epically because I refuse to spend money on this because I'm not making any, um, which brings up the point of why do I even do this, um, and it's fun. It, it actually is legitimately fun. I enjoy um, 
sharing stuff like this, and I enjoy hearing um, the comments that aren't just spam trying to demonetize my videos um, by having me use music that um, is content ID'd um, that they claim isn't, or trying to make, get me to follow them on Instagram so I can see God knows what. Um, probably stuff I don't want to see. Um, you know, those... If you have a channel, then you'll know those spam bots. Um, but whenever there's a real comment, it's quite nice. Because that means that people actually bother and care. Um, and that means that I have showed you something. Um, like that guy who commented who wanted the uh, firmware I'm using on here. Uh, the firmware's been modified. Uh, not all of the safeties are enabled. They're just chain. The, um, the, the, so I've disabled um, one safety feature um, on the firmware I'm using on here to enable me to switch it back and forth between the laser. Um, so if Marlin gives you an error message, um, then just you can either fix it legitimately if if uh, you know how to, or in the um, Marlin error document, whatever, just change the number that if it is uh, greater than this number, just make that number really big. Um, but only do that if you're not going to leave the printer un unattended for long periods of time, because that is technically a safety feature. Um, I thought I should mention that because it just occurred to me that the one I gave you did have temperature protection disabled. So now this is all plugged in. All of the offset wires, I mean the off, the end stop wires have been disconnected. Um, this is still on the print bed, but we are just going to go ahead and auto home. And it worked. So that was the issue. Uh, I guess the lesson is don't um, over tighten the tensioner on these FL Sun printers unless you want a really bad day. And, um, I don't know. I think I probably wasted everyone's time. But, such is life. Um, I don't know. I, maybe I didn't waste your time if you had this issue. I should probably stop rambling, but now that this is done.